In this update, we've got daily storm chances for severe weather all throughout next week as the ridge will continue to build and intensify. And just to the north side of that ridge, that's where the severe storm chances will be as the heat really intensifies and see some of the hottest temperatures of the season. And we also have tropical storm Colin that has formed. Welcome back everyone. Pal Pondra Weather here with your Saturday afternoon update. We got a lot to talk about in this afternoon update. So if you do like detailed weather breakdowns and you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture this afternoon. We can see a lot of convection that is uh, kind of bubbled up in the heat of the afternoon here along this little low pressure center that went in on shore. We dumped almost a foot of rain in the Port Arthur area yesterday. And we're seeing these diurnal driven storms, meaning daytime heating thunderstorms kind of bubble up in the daytime heat of the afternoon into East Texas, getting in further portions of Louisiana and Southern parts of Arkansas here. All this along the coast is just kind of daytime driven thunderstorms and that'll pulse down as we get you know, towards sunset. Then further to the north, we got that boundary. We do have some isolated activity that's really popping up. Nothing into the severe weather threat as of yet, but these these ship these will shift off into the northeast this afternoon, and those could be some powerful, intense storms. But right off the coast, you actually notice this little feature out here. That is actually tropical storm Colin that has formed. Got named a storm early this morning, and um, it's not looking impressive right now. It did actually look more impressive yesterday so we'll kind of zoom in into that area uh right now so let's take a look at the overall setup on colin so they do have a storm the national the, the national hurricane center did in fact name this storm early this morning has some 40 mile per hour winds moving northeast at seven miles an hour now now yesterday i posted on my facebook page it had a pretty good counterclockwise swirl to it it actually looked a lot better yesterday than it actually does right now all the winds are well away from the center i mean you have to really struggle to actually see where this eye is and it's kind of right here this little low pressure center but all the convection as well to the south right and so but nonetheless it is a storm it's an official storm the national hurricane center did in fact name it's going to be traversing along the coast here bringing some very heavy rain to south carolina into north carolina as it will continue to push off into the sea heading out into the open waters uh, of the of the Atlantic. So let's take a look at the overall radar where the storms are right now. So I mentioned we got these little isolated bubblers in the heat of the afternoon. It's got these lightning strikes associated with them. It's trying to push in further into central Texas. It's just having a hard time with a lot of dry air in place. But hey, you could be part of that 15% club that could be seeing a shower over your house. But as the sun set, these storms will, will rapidly die down. But there's, you can definitely see where Colin is. And there it is, guys. I mean, there's the center right there near land and all the convection. Most everything is well away from the center. I think they're clocking like nine mile per hour winds right now. But yesterday, they did actually have some gusts up towards the 50 miles an hour. So they actually should have named it yesterday instead of today. But hey, again, nonetheless, we do have a tropical storm Colin you know, on our hands as, as it continues to shift off. We do have those little bubblers over Kentucky right now and nothing under the severe weather threat, but we do have those storms that will continue to shift further off into the Northeast and that will intensify as we get over the next couple of hours. In fact, they do have a severe th thunderstorm watch currently in place for portions of Bridgeport, getting into uh, Hartford, as well as into Norwich, uh, Providence, all, all into the Boston area. Of those storms could be you know packing some 65 power wind gust a lot of lightning strikes with them and up to possibly ping pong size hail not everybody will see ping pong you might see a sporadic isolated amounts of ping pong size hail but mainly pocket change hail with these storms some have come some quarter size and then very isolated uh ping pong size hail potential but that actually goes on all the way through nine o'clock this evening. So not much now, but I think things are really gonna start lighting up on the radar for you guys up here in the next hour or two. And it'll be pretty but pretty bumpy for about four to five hour time frame. But then after that, after about nine o'clock, things will start to wind down and it'll be a nice evening after that. But but further to for, uh, going into a Sunday time frame, 
there's the storm threat. So you got this ridge of high pressure that's really going to be starting to build over much of the central U.S. And as the heat really starts to intensify, the hundreds start to really start coming back. And just to the north of there, we're actually going to be seeing a series of this all week long. So here on Sunday, the storm threat is going to be over portions of Montana, back into the Dakotas again, going back down into Nebraska. They've seen this time and time again. They're going to be hitting hard with those severe thunderstorms as we get into the daytime on Sunday. And then going into Monday, you can see underneath that ridge of high pressure, you've got a lot of sinking air, a lot of substances there. It's almost next to impossible to rain under that atmosphere. But right along that warm front, right? So just to the north of that boundary line, that's where the storm threat will be. So again, portions of Montana heading to the Dakotas again. To the north of that warm front, we could be seeing some heavier rains starting to break out into portions of Wisconsin in, in, the, in the heat of the afternoon, traversing right along that boundary to the south of there. You won't have any much of rain to speak of. And then we'll still have that, you know, sporadic diurnal, diurnal type of heating thunderstorms over portions of the southeast with that kind of low pressure hanging around by then but i think colin will be a distant memory uh by then but, but yeah by tuesday there's that ridge of high pressure will continue to expand and i think this is a slow expansion really all throughout the week i mean this is almost like uh you know this the, <laughs> once the ridge builds into the summer it's just very difficult to break that apart and we're going to be seeing that as we get you know after the holiday weekend and going into your going into the fifth time frame a 594 DM, that's a pretty intense, you know, high pressure center underneath those deeper reds. That's 100 degree heat, no question about it. And that 100 degree heat will just intensify. But really to the north of here, you know, again, that's where the storm threat will be. So we'll be worried about these severe thunderstorms that kind of traverse right along that boundary here. You can actually kind of see it. You've got the monsoonal flow that will continue underneath all this you know wide area that's the ridge of high pressure you got all the high pressure really dominating but just to the north of that boundary that is the severe side and that's where storms as these little mcs these mesoscale convective systems will be blowing up in the heat of the afternoon and traversing all right along this boundary as they will continue to push you know, you know, southeast right along this boundary as you head into the afternoon hours into the early evening uh, time frame. So let's take a look at the severe threat by by Tuesday where that storms will be right back over Montana again, back over the Dakotas again. About this time, that will probably last further into Minnesota, getting into Iowa, getting into portions of Wisconsin, and then even as far, is even as far south as portions of the Illinois area could start seeing that those severe storms kind of hang on as as the, the ridge will still continue to intensify, you know, further to the south. Again, as we go into Wednesday, we'll have these multiple series of MCS systems. So we have another subtle feature kind of over over Minnesota again, over Wisconsin again, to the south of there, you have that ridge of high pressure pretty much dominating to the north of there. That's the boundary line. That's where the severe threat will be. You can actually see it better on the satellite simulated uh, activity, blow it up over portions of the Dakotas. It might shift a little bit further south, depending on this movement of the ridge, right? It just follows the ridge. As this ridge will intensify, you can see where the clear skies will be <laughs> to the north of there, where that uh, where they have a little bit weaker weakness in the ridge. That's where the storms will be. So this is your... Thursday time frame. So now we're talking places over Nebraska, over Iowa, get into possibly Illinois, over Indiana, over portions of Ohio by then. As we get into Thursday, there's Friday with the ridge of high pressure will continue to expand. The further this expands, we'll just amplify these heat advisories. So I think we'll have some pretty much all week long. So really anyone under this red shaded area from California to the coast of Southeast, could be susceptible to seeing a heat advisory. You have to be at least a, you know, 105 heat index uh, to get under that particular advisory. And I think you will be there, you know, by 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 Friday as this dominating ridge of high pressure and just to the north of there, you can see where the weakness is, where the colors change in the red and you get lighter shades of red going into the pinks. That's where you're going to be more susceptible 
you know, to see in that storm threat into the heat of the afternoon. And again, you can see these MCS features, you don't really see them until on a daily basis. So be, these will be blowing up on, you know, during the afternoon hours and traversing across that, uh, you know, Northwest flow along that Northern Ridge, Northern boundary. So we could be looking at series of storms starting you know from sunday going into monday all really next week all next week is going to be all to the north of that boundary this is almost like the ratio type c type a classic type setup you typically see this time of year with the ridge down to the south and as this expands these ridge riders start to take shape and then just to the north of there that's where the storm threat threat will be so if you live in those areas you need to be on high alert really on a daily basis as you're going to be watching these these mcs systems you know coming down and these really could be some high wind producers for sure uh, all throughout the week as further to the south it's just nothing but the heat guys we've got the most intense heat of the season by far coming coming back with a vengeance and once the triple digit starts it's going to be tough to move them out of the way as the, especially as that ridge will continue to expand and amplify it's just getting drier and drier in texas and oklahoma and the further you dry out it's just a compounding effect it's just a lot easier to heat up that that atmosphere so widespread hundreds even possibly 105 106 even portions of 107 potentially going into the weekend for the dallas worth area next weekend so that is on the table even even say Denver. I mean, it's kind of rare for them to see 100 degrees in Denver, but it's got the possibility to hit it by next weekend as that ridge will be dominating over that area. So yeah, even Denver could be seeing the century mark, you know, heading into uh, next weekend and there's the ridge. It moves subtle, right? So if it starts, you know, further east and it goes over the central US and it moves over potentially the west, it's still there, right? I mean, it's pretty much there. It's going to be bouncing a little bit and I think in the, even beyond this is probably going to move back over the central US. So this ridge is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. It's just underneath that ridge of high pressure that's where all the sinking air will be. You know, that's where all the triple digit be. Well, that's where all the heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, all the dangerous heat will be, no question about it. And there's your overall 10 day temperature anomalies to kind of give you an idea over the next 10 days. I mean, your highest averages are right here, pretty much over Texas and Oklahoma, getting into Kansas, with that heat really starting to build over the central US and the plains. You have weakness here with the monsoonal flow that will continue over portions of new mexico and then you got these troughs coming into the west so you you warmed up you know a couple days in the northwest but you stay predominantly on the cooler side for this time of year over the next 10 days on average really comfortable conditions for you and further to the south you just kind of have those daytime heating thunderstorms in the heat of the afternoon will keep you pretty much on the average side uh, for you. But now let's talk about Bonnie because Bonnie's still around. In fact, it got named a storm on the Atlantic side and it's actually one of the rare storms that did actually cross over and kept its low level center and kept the name Bonnie even on the Pacific side. So if this Bonnie will continue to traverse across, even though this is going to be going out of the open waters, this is fairly formidable system as it's expected to continue to intensify and actually break out and become a hurricane by Tuesday, in fact, top out about 85 miles an hour on a day five. But there are signs that actually it would actually possibly continue to intensify even beyond that. So maybe by Thursday and Friday, uh, hey, we could be looking at a possible major hurricane out there with Bonnie <laughs> out in the open waters of the Pacific. It's not going to affect land, but hey, it has the potential. It's there. It has the potential not to not only become a hurricane, if not a major hurricane out there into the open waters uh, of the Pacific. But where's the rain gonna be? This is pretty much where it's gonna be for the next week. You can definitely see underneath that ridge of, ridge of high pressure, you've got you know sinking air, not much rain to speak of, and the and into the into the desert southwest and much of the much of west and Nevada here. Unfortunately, yeah, much of Texas, much of Oklahoma just gets drier and drier. I wish I had better news for you guys. But there's the boundary just to the north of that ridge you can definitely see where the reds and reds and oranges break out that's where that's where these ridge riders are going to be taking effect all week long so these series of storms are going to be impacting those areas 
almost on a daily basis there's going to be adding to those rainfall totals and again these could be pretty high wind producers so once these form not out of the question that some of these could be poking 70 80 if they start to bow out at times you could be looking at 90 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these storms throughout the week so this is a kind of a, a prime setup for duratio type season and i would not be surprised if you know these little systems kind of come together and start to elongate in a long straight line wind event that we might not have a duratio come out of this atmosphere by the time the week is over next week so and there's colin with the main bulk of the bulk of the rain offshore but we still going to have it coastal you know closer to the coast of the carolinas getting into north carolina into virginia to pick up some healthier rain amounts especially along the coast as we get uh, throughout you know throughout the throughout the weekend into early next week so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you before and after the storm